Yeah. Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to Enologic User Experience webinar. Uh, my name is Anastasia Zuleyeva, and I am product owner of uh, Material Handling, uh, Pedestrian, and Process Modeling Libraries. Uh, so I'm gathering any requests for our, from our users. Uh, so if you have any requests, uh, please, uh, you can contact me anytime uh, and uh, make a, a concept for uh, future features of these libraries. And also, there's another present, a representative of uh, um, Enologic Libraries team today is Roman Goralnik. Roma, please uh, introduce yourself. Uh, hello, my name is Roma. Uh, I'm a part of the library developer team uh, at Enologic. I was partially responsible for developing uh, latest features, uh, namely overhead multi-bridge cranes. So I'm excited to tell you all about new features today. OK. Yeah, today we are going uh, to make a brief uh, overview of uh, Enologic uh, 8.7 uh, new features uh, and uh, to go through the uh, features that are going uh, to come in the next uh, releases. And so one of the uh, biggest features uh, of the 8.7 was uh, the areas with restricted access in uh, pedestrian library uh, so for uh, some people who already uh, Mm. Uh, this is a feature that uh, some people uh, may already knew from material handed library where you could uh, limit the number of transporters uh, and uh, access of transporters uh, to different areas. Uh, now you have almost the same um, feature in uh, pedestrian library, so you can uh, restrict the number of people in certain areas uh, or you can uh, limit the access to the areas according to the pedestrian type. Uh, so uh, if you are you know, modeling the facility, uh, you can also separate uh, the uh, areas where you have uh, material handling equipment working and where uh, the people can, can go. And also this feature may uh, simplify uh, the modeling of evacuation from the plant or factory. And also, of course, uh, in our days, it's very important. So we added uh, the social distancing feature in pedestrian library as well. Uh, another feature uh, that we added uh, was uh, the possibility of recalculating uh, the uh, priorities of uh, agents that are waiting to be served by resources is for imports modern library. Uh, and I think uh, that uh, for many people who are uh, modeling uh, factories uh, and uh, some big uh, buildings, uh, it is uh, the important feature is uh, the possibility to import walls from DXF and DVD files. Uh, so you don't need uh, to uh, draw the walls manually anymore. So you can only to uh, upload uh, these files and uh, the analogy will build uh, the walls for you. Uh, and uh, before we, are, uh, we go to the next step where we uh, want to I present uh, the feature of uh, multi-bridge crane. Uh, please uh, uh, type your questions if you have any. Okay, if you have any questions, please write them down in the chat. Okay, uh, anyway, if uh, you have any, you can uh, type any time during the presentation and uh, we will answer them uh, in the end of uh, the our presentation. So, Roma, yeah. please continue. Thank you. Uh, so, as I said, I'll be talking about uh, overhead multi-bridge cranes, and I think I'll be using Analogic also. So, um, as you may possibly know, Analogic previous version already had the overhead crane, but it had a limitation of having maximum one bridge. Uh, so, to implement multi-bridge cranes, you had to drag and draw several overhead cranes into one uh, spot so they would overlap each other. But the problem of this method is, of course, that different bridges from different cranes doesn't know anything about each other, so uh, collisions would be impossible. Uh, so in the latest version, we, we uh, upgraded our overhead cranes to be able to have more than uh, one bridge. Well, actually, you can have as many as you want. Uh, so this allows to implement uh, automatic collision resolution between uh, bridges. Uh, what I mean by that, let me use in logic. Oh, okay, cool. 
So, for example, if you have a crane with several bridges, and for example, this left bridge needs, needs to deliver the item from left to the right, and there are two, two bridges on the way. Uh, in that case, those two bridges will automatically move to the right uh, to give way to, to the left bridge. Uh, okay, uh, also, uh, now you can uh, specifically, I'll just use this as an example, specifically choose the, the bridge that will be used to deliver an item. You can do that by um, specifically specifying the bridge will, which will be uh, used to deliver an item. Or if you actually don't care about uh, which particular bridge will be used, you can use you can specify the whole system as a whole. In that case, when the agent uh, enters the block, uh, the closest available bridge will be used uh, to deliver your item. Uh, another interesting feature in overhead cranes now is that we implemented manual routing. Uh, you can now uh, manually control every bridge by writing what we call a crane program. A uh, crane program is basically uh, the sequence of commands that you write and pass to the bridge, so the bridge ex ex executes them. I actually want to, yeah, all the information is, is available in our help pages, like this. For example, that's all, 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 everything about the crane program is on our help, help pages. So now I can manually control the bridges and manually write the logic of uh, all the bridges in the system. Uh, okay, next. Now uh, we added two blocks into the library, Seize Crane and Release Crane. Uh, previously, they were kind of embedded in the Move by Crane block. Uh, now we separated them. This allows the user, let me get rid of this. Uh, this allows the user to uh, model some complex behavior that has to happen between uh, assigning the bridge to the item and actually moving the item. So, for example, in this example model, we have uh, we seize the crane, then we do some complex logic. For example, you can use a human resource to actually attach the hook to the, to the item, or maybe you need some pre-processing or preparation to, to do to the bridge and other stuff. Now we can do that. And last, as but not least, is uh, we added some extensive statistics uh, to the overhead uh, bridge. So for example, now you can uh, uh, like check check information on uh, how uh, how much distance did the bridge travel while giving way to other bridges, or for example, what is the time cycle of any particular bridge? The time cycle, which is um, how long does it take for the bridge to deliver one item to to another place on average? Uh, guess will be it for overhead overhead cranes. So if you have any questions, type them. I will. We can continue with our presentation. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, what is going uh, to be released uh, in the next few versions of Material Handling Library. I want to make highlights only on Material Handling Library because uh, previously, several weeks ago, uh, we had a big uh, presentation of uh, AnyLogic uh, 8 uh, highlights and AnyLogic 9. So uh, for those uh, of you who uh, 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 who miss uh, this presentation, uh, you can uh, uh, see it on uh, YouTube on our channel. So, and I want to make a highlights on Material Handling Library only. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, we want uh, to replace our old direct uh, systems uh, in process modeling with a new modernized uh, uh, storage system in material handling that will be much more advanced and will have uh, more features. Uh, we want uh, to enhance uh, our um, uh, conveyors uh, with a bidirectional uh, conveyors uh, and uh, assemble stations. Uh, to simplify uh, the um, uh, modeling of um, uh, assembly processes uh, on automotive uh, production and computer production. Uh, and there are a lot of requests uh, for uh, to make um, more flexible uh, manager of uh, EGVs all the time. Uh, so we also want uh, to, uh, so also we plan uh, to 
make it possible to uh, set the priorities uh, for vehicles that come in into um, intersections or into particular areas. Uh, so uh, the uh, possibilities of collisions will be even less than they are now. Uh, and um, finally, uh, we want to uh, make uh, the UNITE uh, space uh, both for pedestrians and transporters. Uh, so in this um, space, they can uh, travel and uh, see each other uh, and avoid collisions. And also, I want to um, add uh, uh, some more information about the new Rx system uh, that we are going to uh, add to Analogic. Uh, first of all, you will be able to um, uh, to model any type of, of Rx system that you have. It may be selective rack, drive-in rack, gravity rack, any type. Uh, also, the very uh, important feature that is uh, frequently requested uh, is the possibility uh, to add uh, uh, many agents uh, into one cell and uh, not only to take uh, them separately from the one cell, but uh, uh, also to take, uh, to take all these agents uh, that are contained uh, in the uh, one storage place uh, as a one batch, for example, like container. Uh, and uh, um, of course, uh, these um, Rx uh, will be combined uh, with the uh, current uh, material handling logic, uh, I mean with uh, transporters and cranes. Uh, so you can easily put uh, the agent uh, inside uh, the rack uh, with transporter. Uh, but as the last step, uh, we want uh, to include uh, the uh, particular material handling equipment uh, inside the racks, uh, for example, shuttles uh, and the stacker cranes. So all you will need to do in your model uh, will be uh, the uh, logic of uh, delivering uh, the agent uh, to rack. And after that, uh, the, rack, uh, uh, the rack markup uh, will uh, um, place uh, the agent uh, inside the cell itself uh, using uh, the built-in equipment like shuttle or stacker crane. Okay, uh, there are some questions. Yeah, say so thank you for your attention. Yeah, let's try to answer some questions. Yeah, so we'll um, try to answer your questions now. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions, uh, can you give an example of uh, when the new uh, process modeling um, library task choice condition would be useful? It seems like a kind of reverse uh, of uh, the existing uh, resource choice condition. In example, resource led, uh, not, uh, not entity led. Uh, so maybe a comparison of the two is useful. Uh, well, uh, I can give you an example. For example, <laughs> Uh, for example, uh, you have a big warehouse, a warehouse, and uh, there are a lot of um, uh, there are a lot of agents uh, that are waiting uh, to be delivered somewhere. Uh, in uh, uh, different cases, uh, uh, your agent may uh, uh, wait uh, for a uh, resource or for transporter for a very long time. During this time, uh, the um, priority of uh, this agent uh, may become higher because otherwise uh, it will be uh, delayed for, um, for example, too long time. So uh, regarding the time, uh, this uh, agent is waiting for AGV or for, or for resource, uh, the, its uh, priority will become higher. So this is uh, the uh, example here. Uh, and another question is, uh, what is uh, uh, the expected release date for the functionality that uh, will allow transporters and pedestrians to detect each other? Uh, well, it's a bit uh, difficult question, actually. We um, think that uh, probably alpha version uh, will be uh, ready in the end of the next year, but uh, I think that uh, the actual possibility of uh, detection of collision between pedestrian and transporters will be released uh, only in uh, 2022. Okay. Do this REC system has, uh, okay, one uh, next question. Uh, do these uh, REC uh, systems enhancements uh, tighten uh, the integration with the 
uh, process modeling. Uh, at the moment, you can't uh, easily use transporters. Yeah. Same question. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, this is a quick question. Uh, we don't want uh, to enhance uh, the uh, process modeling uh, blocks and markup. It will be totally new markup and uh, blocks that will be in. Uh, uh, material handling library, uh, but uh, uh, in um, if you already have uh, process modeling blocks uh, in your uh, models, uh, they will become deprecated. So you can use your old models, uh, but uh, for new models, you will it would be better to use uh, these uh, new blocks that will come in uh, next uh, releases. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what would be expected in terms of uh, innovation improvement, also in terms of uh, overall performance in uh, interface performance uh, improvement? Okay. Uh, regarding uh, uh, animation performance uh, improvement, in this uh, version, uh, we slightly improved uh, the performance. Uh, in some models, uh, it uh, should be improved uh, by uh, one. Uh, by 30%, uh, and in another um, uh, model, uh, it is already improved uh, for more than uh, 300%. Uh, it, of course, uh, it uh, depends a lot uh, on the type of uh, the model that you have, because, uh, of course, the animation uh, is very, very different in different uh, uh, models uh, and uh, also uh, it is not like a stop point of uh, this um, uh, of this process uh, because uh, I think uh, that uh, our team uh, is going to improve uh, the uh, performance of uh, animation at each next release. So uh, I think that uh, soon we can expect that uh, the animation performance will become much higher. Uh, and uh, concerning the interface performance improvement, uh, uh, I think that uh, it is more connected uh, to the uh, analogic nine uh, because uh, we are doing it with the uh, um, thought that, uh, the, of course, that interface uh, should be very quick to response. I can't do that. Yeah. What would be the possibility to have also the graphical representation as a multi-arm gantry system? Uh, I would say it's really not a problem, and uh, if we have uh, like a, a query from the from the from our users, we will we can definitely do that. Maybe I, I won't do any promises actually, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's, it's a possibility. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to add uh, to uh, the words of Roma uh, that uh, of course uh, we know that. Uh, mm, that uh, there are some requests about uh, um, calculating the energy consumption in analogic, but we have uh, still a lot of uh, features uh, in our plan. Uh, so uh, this feature is also well known, but it is not in the list of the uh, the most uh, uh, the most soon soon coming features. I would like to say so. Okay. When will the different racks? When will the different Different rack systems will be available. Uh, yes, uh, the next rack they will uh, go uh, uh, step by step. Uh, so uh, I think uh, that uh, the first step uh, will uh, I okay. The first uh, stage uh, of uh, Rex uh, will be available uh, next spring. Uh, and uh, there will be uh, uh, already the possibility for some different uh, slotting strategies inside about uh, the uh, the RECs uh, that will fully replace uh, the uh, process modeling REC uh, will be available later. I think it's probably in summer, probably in autumn uh, next year. Uh, and uh, 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 after that, uh, we will uh, add uh, the features to these RECs uh, step by step. So for example, uh, uh, at the first stage, uh, the RECs won't have the possibility of uh, uh, storing uh, multiple agents inside one cell. Uh, so we will add it in the further steps. But on the further uh, in uh, in the first step, uh, we already plan to add the uh, support of uh, 
a transporter um, of transporters uh, that can uh, store uh, that agents uh, inside uh, the rack and uh, take uh, the agents from the rack. And I see the I see the question about uh, the imports uh, in uh, PLE. Uh, I'm not sure that I can answer on this, so uh, we will answer to, on this question uh, later by email. Okay, all right. So uh, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a pleasure to, so before uh, close, I would be grateful to all the presenters uh, that are still team, uh, all the people, Mr. Hemant Kumar and uh, Mr. Anand and uh, Mr. Ritam and uh, uh, Shavik. So well, thank you very much for joining this session and a special thanks to Anastasia and Raman for joining and uh, really <laughs> providing us a bonus uh, and uh, to the session and adding a lot of value to the session by giving the, uh, the features, uh, the, the upcoming features of the software. Thank you very much. Thank you once again, everyone who have attended this and look forward to see you again in our next session of Enlarge uh, User Experience next month. Yeah, and we'll be having 10 of events. So look forward to meet you again with other customer and his experience. So thank you very, thank you very much once again and good night, good evening or good day. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank bye. you. Bye. bye. bye.